Hey, yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you once again. Today we are going to be solving the zigzag conversion problem. That's problem number six on Leak Code. Um, if you haven't tried it yet, pause the video, give it a try, come on right back. But for those of you that have, um, this problem's got quite a few downvotes. I do realize that. I still think it's a good problem though. And, and quite frankly, I don't think it's obvious on first glance how to solve it exactly. Uh, there are a few ways to go about it. I'm only going to focus on one still rather efficient uh, way to do it. I might make a follow-up video afterwards that'll look at a couple of, uh, like a more mathematical approach, but I, I wanna do one that's kind of, you know, both sufficient and, and reasonable to come up with in the context of your interviews. Now, uh, the question basically says as follows. You're given a string, in this case it's uh, PayPal is hiring. Uh, it says that that's written in a zigzag pattern on a given number of rows like this. Um, so we've got, we, we kind of start at in the PayPal is higher and we, so we start from the top down. So we go P-A-Y and then up and then we go back down and then we go up and then down and then back up. It then says then you need to read the line as follows. So basically from left to right, top down. So left to right, top down, that's how we're going to be kind of putting this all together at the end. And, and that's ultimately what we want to return. They give us another example where the number of rows is four now instead of three. So the letters will, will break down between four different rows. So I think that makes sense. Now, let's think about this one. Like I said, I don't think it's entirely obvious whatsoever. If we were to kind of, maybe we can take a second here and kind of draw it on and think about it. If we've got, uh, maybe I'll start by, by writing out the word. I'll say PayPal is hiring. Let's kind of think through how we do this in our in our in our minds, maybe manually, if you will. And I think this is generally good practice. When you sit down at an interview and you're not necessarily sure how to solve something, uh, usually not always. Usually, one good place to start is to say, "Well, if I was to kind of do this mentally and, and walk it out step by step, how would I go about doing this?" And then we can. That's at least you know that's a it's a starting point. And then from there, maybe we can see is there then a, a nice, clean, efficient way to, to you know make this into code into reproducible. Um, you know, syntax. So if we were to, to write this out manually, oh, it's not working. Uh, if we were to write this out manually, we would kind of start at, at this P. So we would go one letter at a time. And then as we as we traverse through these letters, we, we kind of write them out as false. So we'd start with a P and then we'd say, we've got A and I guess I'm, I'm kind of inherently assuming here the number of rows is, is three. But what we're doing is we're starting at P, we're going down, okay, that's our second letter. We go down, okay, Y, that's our third letter. Oh, but, you know, three is our, our number of rows, so now I gotta start going back up. So now we need to, we need to bounce off the bottom and start writing this one. Okay, we're, we're back in the second row. And, uh, okay, here we are on the first row. Oh, okay, well, we made it all the way up. Now we gotta come back down. Um, and, and we kind of repeat, okay, we're back down at the bottom again. Let's keep going. Um, and, and, and so on and so forth. So we end up taking kind of this pattern here so on and so forth. Um, I think you guys get the picture. Now, a couple of, uh, in case you're not really seeing it just yet, I, th I think one one leap, one mental leap that we need to take is that perhaps a smart way to store these, these letters as we go would be actually in an array form. So imagine we had uh, an array for each single row here. And what we did was we said, you know, let me, as I see these letters one at a time, let me put them in the correct array. Let me append or, or push that extra value onto there, um, that, that next value, excuse me. Eventually we'll end up with something that, that kind of looks like, like this. Okay, so that makes sense. Well, you know, at the end of the day, then we, we know we need to return a string. So maybe we can do some sort of concatenation business where we, you know, we, we put all these together and then we, we put all these together and then we put all these together and, and you know, out we spit our, our response. Um, that is shocking handwriting. Um, so an approach like this is something that we can take. I think usually, definitely where I got tripped up when I first saw this problem was how to actually find out, you know, okay, well, let me go down and then let me bounce back up and let me bounce back down and let me kind of go up and down and you know, I, I think that's one part that we're missing. So maybe when we jump into that the code, I'll, I'll give you a heads up. Maybe you want to pause the video and think about how you would you would approach that situation. Uh, but it's a neat trick, and this is kind of the the crux of the problem and, and why I really wanted to go through it. Now, 
think we're in a good spot to go to go check out the code. If we go back here and and we take a look at what we got, well, first thing that we want to say is um, ultimately we essentially want to create some sort of uh, some sort of characters array. So maybe I'll I'll just call it uh, care array. And what we want to do is, you know, with with Python, we can use a that nifty little trick of of uh, list comprehension that'll very efficiently create this for us. What we want to do is we want to have one one kind of inner array for every single number of rows that we have. So what we'll do is we can say is for for some underscore in in the range of the number of rows, we are going to create this this empty array. Um, now, even before we do that, a couple of edge cases we might want to think about. Um, one is, you know, if the number of rows is one, well, that's kind of trivial, we're just going to return the string in and of itself. Uh, so if number of rows is equal to one, the other thing we might want to think about is what if the number of rows is larger than the string itself? If I had a string of length of length 10 and I had, you know, 50 rows, well, what would happen there is we, we would kind of just write the letters down one underneath the other and we'd concatenate them one at a time. And or, sorry, concatenate is not the right word. We're working with strings. We'd kind of... Uh, append them or attach them to each other one at a time, um, that would kind of be senseless to do all this. So in that case, what I also want to say is if the number, oh, um, or the or the number of rows is less than or, or greater than or equal to the, the length of s, then what we want to do is we just want to return the string itself because there won't be any modifications. There will be no zigzagging to be done. So now that that's kind of a way that, uh, that's out of the way, excuse me, that, that kind of administrative stuff, uh, we go back to what we were saying with First off, creating a, a character array. This is going to be where we're going to house all the all the letters that we're finding. Now, well, at some point, what we're going to want to do is we're going to say, you know, let's let's kind of walk through every character at a time. So we'll have some business for you know for for C in what do we call it in S? The string is S. So for C and S, we're going to want to say car array of of, of some row that we're in, and we'll define what row is exactly. In, and how we're going to deal with it, but we want to basically append this uh, this C. Um, so you know we we know we're going to start at the at the top and the zero through and work our way down. So maybe it would be sensible to start with you know seeing row is equal to zero. And, and now we ask ourselves, you know, okay, this is all this is all good. Um, we now want to increase the rows we're going down, but again, then we're going to get into this issue of like, well, we get to the bottom and then we got to jump back up and we're at the top and we want to go back down and we want to essentially switch the direction of what we're doing. This is where it's not obvious. Again, if you haven't thought about this yet, I strongly suggest pausing the video, think it over, see if you can come up with a clever way. Uh, otherwise, if not, come right on back and we'll, we'll go through it right now. The, the trick to kind of to solving this and getting that balancing action is actually going to be setting a variable that we're going to call, I'll call it direction. Um, and by default, I'll set the direction equal to, you know, set it to the negative one. And, and you'll see why in just a second. What we're going to want to do is as follows. We are going to want to attach the character that we have. And then we're going to ask ourselves, if the row is either equal to zero or if the row is equal to the length of, or excuse me, if it's equal to, to the number of rows, then what we want to do is we want to switch the direction. Namely, we want to say direction times equals negative one. The reason we want to do this is as follows. Now that we've kind of, you know, we've, we've appended this, we maybe would have been kind of more sensible if I explained it the other way, but anyways, we, um, we, we've got this part over here and maybe I'll, I'll even kind of ignore that for now. Um, we do this. Let's say we've appended our array and we say, okay, well, now I want to increase my, my row by one or um, I'm going to increase it by the direction that we have. Well, let's say our, our direction is one, um, the reason I want to increase it by one is because I want to jump down to the, to the next value and then the next one. And, and when I get to the bottom, well, eventually someone's going to want to switch a direction. And that's where this piece of code that I just had comes in. The reason that I had this set negative one originally is as follows. If we hit either of the extremes, either zero or the number of rows, I'm going to want to switch the direction that I was just coming from. So if I append my first character and my direction is now set at negative one, I'm going to enter this conditional statement and when I say direction times equals negative one, direction will be one. Our row will now go from zero to one. We will now be appending at row one. What this will look like is, is as follows. Let me get over this. We're going to start by saying, we're gonna have our, oops, I'm sorry. There we go. Um, no, get out of there. 
So we're going to start by appending the P. Our direction, our, or rather our row was zero. Our next row is going to be one, meaning that we're going to put our A right here. The next row is going to be two. Now that this row is two, we've hit that, you know, oh, now that I say it out loud, uh, if we hit num rows minus one, if we get to the end of, of where we want to be, right, uh, then we want to switch direction. So now when I add row, we're saying row plus equals direction, right? We've kind of, I'm sorry to jump around here, row plus equals direction. Well, direction is now going to be negative one. And so that's why we're, we're going to jump back up here and then back up here. And then, oh, we've hit zero. We're going to jump down again. And I think you guys get the, uh, get the gist of it here. Visually, what might not be so obvious is that when we when we kind of look at the arrangement that we see here, it looks like we've got a whole bunch of space between the letters. That's just for visual effect. Strictly speaking, we can only we can have you know arrays that are, are going to be of different lengths. These rows may have different lengths at, at the end of this operation, but sequentially, we're still going to be adding in the characters at the correct spot. And that's what's tricky about this about this problem. And, and this neat little trick over here with the direction is is really one that I wanted to show you guys. Now, once we, we have our, our characters, I think from here it, it'll be relatively smooth sailing. We can declare some sort of uh, result string. Uh, eventually we'll, we'll want to return that result. And in between what we're going to want to say is uh, as such. We'll say, you know, for, for uh, let's call it array um, in car array, we are going to want to say that result uh, plus equals some blank string about join this array. So we're going to go through every array, join the characters, slap it onto the result, slap it onto the result, slap it onto the result, return the result, and hopefully, if all goes well, timing was perfect, we submit this, everyone goes home happy. There we go. So the time complexity to this solution, which I do want to mention briefly, will uh, it likely, or not likely, it will be a, a O of N time and O of N space solution. It'll be O of n time because we need to traverse through every every character once, and we do that only once. It'll be O of n space because we actually end up storing every single one of those characters in that in that two dimensional array that that we kind of created. Um, now, in case you guys are feeling up for it, especially if you you know if you're if you're feeling that math bug, uh, you may want to jump in and try to look for a solution that, that can give you O of one space. Uh, that's all one space if we exclude the actual result. Of course, the result itself will take up some space. I'm saying there is a solution that takes all one auxiliary space, uh, which is, is separate from the from the result itself. Uh, it's tricky. I may cover it in a follow-up video, but I, I, just, I really wanted to focus on this one because in the context of an interview, this is what you'd be expected to answer. It's, it's definitely an efficient solution. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys learned something from it. Let me know if you have any questions about any of this down below. Uh, also, as always, any other questions you want me to solve, let me know. Happy to get on to them. And yeah, see you guys next time. Peace.